Hey everybody, I am Bratman19 and welcome to episode 1 of a brand new campaign in your opening of ourselves for. This time we'll be playing as Russia, but first, before we can be Russia, we have to start as a Russian nation and form it. So, actually we're going to be playing as Muscovy in this one, which is this nation right here. So, um, we're really trying to get two different um, achievements with this run. One is just to form Russia, and it's like all belong uh, all lands belong to Russia or something like that and the other one is uh, first to the Far East or something like that uh, where we pretty much just colonize all the way over here prior to 1600 so uh, we have a lot on our plate to do and we definitely do need to get started so let's go ahead and hop on in so Muscovy is a duchy you want to start it is an Eastern tech group and we are running as an Orthodox nation uh, there's not a whole lot of Orthodox nations at the start and they're all pretty much like right here anyway, so uh, it's pretty cool to see that. We are a Grand Principality, and uh, we have Grand Kanaz Vasily the Second Timney. He is a 312 leader, and we start at 333 like most other nations in Europe. Um, we do have Muscovite ideas. Our starting ideas are uh, Muscovite traditions, diplomatic relations plus one, and shock damage plus 10%. When we get all of our ideas, we have Muscovite Ambition, Land Force Limit Modifier, plus 33%. Uh, we have Gatherers of Tribute, National Tax Modifier, plus 10%. Legacy of Dmitry Donskoy, Yearly Army Tradition, plus 0.5. Seat of Metropolitan Bishop, Missionary Strength, plus 1%. Tolerance of the True Faith, plus 1. Pumpstone Voisco. Morale of Armies, plus 10%. I'm going to like that one. Strength of the Boyars. Stability Cost Modifier, minus 20%. Zasechnaya Sherta is Fort Maintenance, minus 20%. And Descendants of Byzantine Emperors, Diplomatic Reputation, plus 1. We have we start with 22 provinces, 197 development, and a 7 fort level. We do have 5 vassals. Piskov, Yaroslavl, Perm, Beluzeru, and Rostov. So Perm... Yaroslav, Beluzeru, Rostov, and Piskov out here. Um, and our main rival is right here to the north, Novgorod, as well as Poland, Lithuania in some way, shape, or form. And then, of course, the hordes out here. Um, I am playing with Third Rome. i got to find it. There it is right there. Third Rome. So things are going to be different, as well as we are in the Rural Britannia expansion uh, is the latest one released. So let's go ahead and pop on in. We're doing an Iron Man so I can get those achievements. And we're going to just say we're Russia. All right. Yeah, we're, we're going to be calling ourselves Russia, even if we are Muscovy at the time. I just figured, why not? Why are we too worried about that? Anyway, so the Grand Principality of Muscovy, 1444. Uh, the Rurokoviches of Muscovy. At the end of 1444, Russia is divided in a number of principalities, all of whom have for a long time lived in the shadow of the Tatar Golden Tord. The Tatars have been present in Russian politics, collecting tribute, taxes, and acting as kingmakers in the Christian states. While the Grand Principality of Muscovy is not the oldest of these states, it has recently grown to be the strongest. Located in the relatively fertile Apollie, Muscovy has a stronger internal economy than many other principalities. More importantly, their princes have often acted as collectors for the cons of the, Horde, or the Golden Hordes making their princes both relatively safe and able to grow rich. Since the crushing defeat of the whole Golden Horde at the hands of the Timurid armies, their empire is fractured into a number of successor states. The core of that empire, the Great Horde, is still a strong power in its own right, but it is fraught by internal struggles and has been unable to project much power over the Russians. Muscovy has made good use of this power vacuum, expanding their control over the other principalities rapidly through both cunning and use of military resources often even by simply buying out the poor princes and adding their lands to the Muscovite domain. Moscow is not the only strong state with interest in the Russian region, however. In the north, the Republic of Novgorod has colonized much of the White Sea coastline, securing the valuable waterways and a source of fur, the soft gold of the north and east. To the west, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland are doing what they can to assume the leadership of all Russias, asserting authority over most Ruthenian lands, as well as a constant factor in the politics of the free Russian states in the north. Their interests are directly opposed to the growing power of Moscow, but their claim to the Rus' legacy is quite dubious. If they can be overcome, there is seemingly no limit to how much the Great Principality could grow. If the Tatar yoke could be crushed once and for all, there is also the vast expanse of Siberia, full of untold riches and dangers. 
If the many Khanate's natives and the nature itself can be overcome, then there is no limit to how rich a united Russian state could grow. We, of course, are Orthodox. We are a Grand Principality, which is a monarchy. And we are to the east of the Holy Roman Empire. And we're kind of like in the middle of the Holy Roman Empire over here, and then the Ming over here, and the Ottomans down here. So we have quite a few... We do have potential rivals popping up that could be uh, real serious threats. Let's see. I, of course, want to pay, make Novgorod into one of my rivals. Uh, other than that, I want Great Horde. And I want Kazan. I don't want to make Lithuania or Denmark. I have no wish to go in their directions right now. Um, let's see. I have a 10 and 3 army right here. So I need to go ahead and break this guy up. I need only one of you. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a seven and one going to join this. Ten and four. Actually, I need to take one guy out of that. So they're going to go there. These four are going to stay behind. So two and two. Again, I'm taking six. So 16 and four. Good. Because we start out with a really weird lead. Oh, wow. That's a nice leader, actually. Um, Making 3.16 ducats per turn. And our goal is like this here. So I do need to get ready to go to war as quickly as I can. Uh, I have all of my spots used up. So let me go ahead and say... Let's see. Dynastic royal marriage. Yes. You. Royal marriage. Yes. Bump up my speed. And oh, there we go. Great. Royal marriages with the first two. Royal marriage with you. Royal marriage with you. Perfect. Now let's come over here to my diplomacy. Get one back. Own subjects are going to get one, which means this guy's probably going to run over here to Piskov. He'd better run to Piskov. That's probably the best place for him. Uh, we have to worry about them a little bit. Get this guy here together. Tiver. Wow, did Tiver just like join in without me doing anything? What happened there? They're in a personal union with us. See, I didn't even have to do anything in a per uh, we just got a personal union. That's pretty fantastic. Hmm. Okay, who are your allies? You are automatically allied with Denmark, so that's a problem. Hmm. If I can find out, come on. And they're actually making trade leagues right now. Like what the heck, man? I declared war on them, the Theodoro and yeah, I could immediately that brings Lithuania in. Hmm. See, this right here brings in not only Denmark, but it'll bring in Sweden and Norway. We definitely don't want to do that. What would taking Ryazan do? Lithuania, Odiev would bring in Novgorod and Theodoro. Um, let's go ahead and say covert actions, build a spy network on Odiev. And we'll go ahead and get started on that. I'd really rather not have Tiver in a in a in that uh, junior partner status. If I'm honest, doesn't do me much good. Who are your friends? Uzbek, which I can't haven't seen yet. Your friends are. Dulcidere and Uzbek. Okay. 
What is my total? Oh, I could add quite a few more troops. There you go. Yeah, we'll do that. Go ahead and expand that army a little bit. What do I need to do? Let's see. Invade Novgorod, build the force limit, trustworthy allies, high income, and tame the steps. Yeah, build the force limit. Now we need to expand, I guess. Which is what we're trying to do. The surrender of Maine event occurred. How'd that go? Looks like France and England are at war. Get ready to fabricate a claim. Yep, we do want it. Who are you still in that? Okay, declare. If I take that. Hmm. Yeah, I would love the co belligerent Novgorod, but, uh. Yeah, it'd be twice as expensive to take their provinces, which, you know, I really just want to take one, two, three, four, including Neva. If I could get these other ones, I would love them, but I don't know. So, if we're ready, might move this guy to there, this guy to Kaluga, because he really doesn't have anything to fight down there. Might get him a leader anyway. There you go. At least it's something. Provincial unrest in Kazimov, that's fine. Declare war. Take Odoya, take Odoya right there. Boop. Um. Yeah, they do have fully maintained forts. We're gonna go straight for that. Invading Novgorod, so I get permanent claims. They're fighting right here. Boom, nice. Um, detach the siege for that. We're going to go down here to Luki as well. Might as well go ahead and try to grab it. Get them both knocked off and done. Yeah, look at these forces. I mean, they could go out here and fight all of this really well. Uh, Kosek's estate loses 10 loyalty. I can take Patriarch Authority and, yeah, that manpower. It's nice, but I don't think I'll need it right yet. Patriarch Authority is nice to have. 49, 57, come on. Faster we can, the better. This did, we did just break down a wall, uh, have a wall breach though. Okay, do the best you can to just fight them. Take the l huge amounts of land out there. We can finish off Odiev really quickly, I would love it. More Patriarch Authority, please. That's at 7. That's at 8 point. That's negative 21, but I can't do anything about it. Um, I don't really need to worry about the claim that I have on Blue Zeru. It's not that big a deal. Why are you down here, Tiver? You do me no good to be all the way down here. Siege of Luki is over. Go after Calm. Well, we make them pay to have to and get make them get rid of all this manpower. Siege of Novgorod is over. Yaroslav's opinion of must be changed by plus fifty. We get more Diplo as well. Waiting on Odiev to go down too. I think we're sitting on Neva. I'll go to Tikvin. Since we're already sitting on Neva. Okay, go ahead over here. This is kind of surprising how well this went. Um, everybody come with me. We're going to go knock out their army over here. Alright, let's go. 
you guys focus on just making sure they don't retake all that stuff back. How about that? There we go. We're going to go here. Catch up with them. And I think we stacked wipe. Good job. All right, continue on north. We could not let them run off. That would be great. I'm going to try to cut them off here so that they're in, they have to go through us. Actually, I think it's done. Okay, there we go. Um, Novgorod's out of it, pretty much. Let me go ahead and click here. Go ahead and just tell them, I definitely want your war reps. I want Calm and Inga. And I'll take that too. If I could, could I re could I tell you? Get rid of that deal that you have with them. Okay. That gives me some great prime lamb and land. I conquer up to Piskov right there. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Send it. Bring these boys back down here. Great first little start to this war. We'll go ahead and make these cores. Matter of fact, I'm gonna send these guys down here. Oh, and we'll run into their army, the Odiev army here. They'll probably get away. Yeah, they will. They got away. Oh, but they didn't get away for long. Okay. Siege of Odiev is now done. Uh, Theodoro. I don't have... Well, I do have apparently have something against you. Oh, we... That's what you did, Tiver. As much as I would love to take that, I can't. Uh, you will it's like a suggest there that make you steer trade yeah yes force them out of that um He's transferring his trade to me as well. Give these guys a few days to get back. There you go, Odiev. Give me everything you got. There you go, quick and easy. Nice war. Uh, now we're just going to kind of sit back, let our manpower recover. We're going to core up what we got as well. Let's bring this guy back to Kaluga. That way, if they do want to go out there and try something, they're more than welcome to. We gained the one corruption because we're fighting it down pretty well. Okay. This guy's getting it first, it looks like. 20,000 is what we're after. Could we add anything? We could add one more, so it would go, you know, down here. Insult by Novgorod, by the looks of it. Not worried. Lose 60 ducats and 15 for national unrest, or we can just gain the five legitimacy. I'll take the five legitimacy. I don't have to lose anything for that. Um, Making good money, not great money. Supporting Cossacks or supporting Burgers? Um, support the Burgers. I don't really care either way, honestly. Doesn't necessarily matter. We've improved relations with them. Uh, how is my current heir? He's a 3-4-5. I don't want to lose that.
pay it and hope. And he did die anyway. You gotta be kidding. That's crap. Had a really good air die. Colm's almost been made into one Ingerlin. There we go. How long is my peace deals here? Novgorod's until 1462, so that's a full 15 years. And then Theodora's until 1459. I could attack Lithuania during that time. Kazan. Really rather fight. Well, they're a junior partner of Poland. I'd love to tell. Well, again, this isn't going quite real well. If the Teutonic Order was beating them back, it'd be different. Hmm. We'll just have to see. I could conquer these lands too, just to make sure they're out of the way. Biggest thing is don't let Novgorod and Denmark ally up. And then make sure I take this land. If they do. I want that land for myself. Nope, Renaissance has popped. But with that right there, we'll go ahead and end this. Um, I think it's going to be a very interesting campaign. Uh, Russia is kind of difficult to really get going in the early years. Once you get it going, though, it's it runs... It's like a freight train. It takes forever to get started and going. Once it gets going, it doesn't stop. So hopefully that's the same thing that happens here. I'll probably be bumping heads with the Ottomans and Poland and Austria at some point and Sweden for sure, uh, as well as maybe the Ming one day out here. So uh, we'll find out. But all right, guys, appreciate y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Maybe check out the link for Discord in the description below. We'll be talking about this, and I'll see you all next time.